Okay. Hi, my name is Mark Tibelt from a company called Biogas South Africa or Biogas Consulting South Africa. And I've been in the biogas industry for the past 12 years, developing biogas projects in South and Southern Africa. Uh, anything from small domestic scale digesters all the way through to big commercial digesters. And we've also done extensive um, biogas feasibility studies, reports um, for various companies, both individual, individual companies in the commercial sector, as well as for government department, NGOs and so forth. So I've got a fairly extensive understanding of the process of biogas and how to implement the biogas um, as, a, as a viable venture both domestic and commercial. Um, I've decided to do three short videos just to give people the basic understanding about what biogas is about. The second video will be a little bit more looking at the domestic sized digesters installation. And the last video will be on the commercial side. What do you need to look at if you've got a whole heap of organic waste and you want to develop a commercial biogas digester. So those are the three videos and hopefully that'll give you a lot better understanding of what biogas is about before you actually venture into putting some money um, on the table. So the first video I'm going to quickly just in brief um, we can spend days and days just talking about biogas basics but I'm just going to literally just going to cover the few basics around biogas so that you've got an understanding of the many, many variables that come into play when you look at biogas as a potential solution. As I said, whether it's domestic or, or commercial, the basic principles remain the same. Now, anybody, when you listen to, when you read on the internet or listen to any talk about biogas, what, um, what everybody will focus on, the first and foremost thing is the feedstock. So you will hear feedstock, feedstock, feedstock. All through these three videos, I will keep on coming back. I will keep coming back to feedstock. That is the organic waste that you've got available. That determines absolutely everything around your biogas um, plant. It's gonna de determine how much biogas you can potentially produce, um, how big your plant is gonna be, what design is gonna be, the financial viability, the cost associated. Everything comes back to looking and understanding what is the feedstock. So first of all, you need to know what kind of feedstock you've got. So the basic biogas um, principle is any type of organic waste that digests in the absence of oxygen will produce biogas. So what you've got to do is you've got to look at what type of organic waste you've got, how much you've got available um, of it um, because that's going to determine how much biogas the microbes during the anaerobic digestion process will be able to release from your organic waste. But just, let's just go back a, a quick step back. I said, as I said, you need to create an, an anaerobic environment. In other words, you need to have a vessel or a tank or a digester as we refer to it that provides you with anaerobic conditions. In other words, no oxygen ingress because the microbes that produce the biogas bio function in anaerobic conditions. In other words, in the absence of oxygen. So basically, any organic waste digested in the ab absence of oxygen, those microbes produce a byproduct that we refer to as biogas. Biogas consists, consists primarily out of three um, gases. The most important one is the methane. About 60% of your methane uh, of your biogas consists of methane. You've got about 40% uh, of CO2 and you've got a, a couple of other small gases of which the primary one will be sulfur, sulfur gas. And then you've also got a bit of moisture and other uh, gases that's, that's not doesn't play such an important role. So your three main gases in biogas is methane. That's where your energy sits. You've got CO2 that makes up the bulk of the rest of it. And then you've got sulfur and I'll, I'll look at all three of those. But the most important um, um, component is the methane because you can use methane in the same way that you can use LPG gas. It's a combustible gas, so you can use it on for cooking purposes to create hot water or hot air by just combusting it. Um, you can convert the biogas into electricity 
by feeding the biogas into a generator. So instead of feeding the generator or fueling the generator with diesel or paraffin, you can run on um, you can run your generator on biogas as well, and that will generate the electricity. Or what what recently happens quite a bit in South Africa and around the world is that you upgrade your biogas to biomethane, and then it's got an energetic equivalent um, to LPG gas. We remove the CO2 and then you remain with pure methane. Um, so those are the ways that you can utilize your biogas um, as a form of energy. Um, so let's just get back to, to, to feedstock, your organic type of organic waste. Um, it is so important because they are every single type of organic waste has got a different yield potential as we, as we refer to it in the industry. So if you, for instance, take cow manure, Cow manure can give you more or less 30 cubic meters of biogas per ton, right? But if you get nice feed stuff, uh, um, food waste from a restaurant, uh, for instance, you can get about 150 cubic meters of biogas. 30 cubic meters for cow manure compared to 150 cubic meters for food waste, five times more. And so every single type of organic waste has got a different yield potential. So you need to understand what type of organic waste you've got and try and figure out how much biogas you can actually get from it. Um, you also need to know whether that feedstock is going to be available throughout the year. The biogas process or the anaerobic digestion process is a live microbial system. So you need to keep it warm and you need to feed them every day or on a continuous basis. If you don't, like any living organism, they will die. So you need to make sure that that organic waste that you've got available or you've identified as a source of, of feedstock for your digester, for your biogas plant, you need to make sure that it's available throughout the year, consistently available. It can't be seasonal. If you, if you are looking at making biogas from potatoes, for instance, yes, it's a very good source of biogas. But if it's only available for two months of the year, it's not going to help. You're not going to have a viable biogas plant in the long term so so the so understanding your your feedstock your organic waste is of critical importance because that will literally determine everything else around your biogas plant but there are other variables that come into play as well there is absolutely nothing generic about biogas you know if we compare it so I'm, I'm digressing here for a second but if you compare it to solar for instance you need to generate a certain kilowatt hours of electricity a day. You calculate how many panels you've got to put on the roof, and that's a fairly straightforward calculation. In, in biogas, first of all, you now understand that feedstock alone is a massive big variable. But temperature plays a role. Microbes, the, the methanogens that actually produce the biogas, they uh, come from live uh, or from hot-blooded animals, so they operate around about the 40 degrees centigrade. And that's when your microbes and your anaerobic digestion process will be at its optimum. If the temperature drop, drops, your efficiency of your microbes uh, is going to drop down as well. So if it gets, goes below 15 degrees, you're not going to produce any biogas because your microbes are basically going to park off and go to sleep. So, um, so temperature is a critical role. How you prepare your feedstock, how you store your feedstock um, is, is also important because the longer you leave it outside, um, the more of the potential methane in your material is going to escape into the atmosphere. So understanding how to stock your or uh, stockpile your organic waste, how you're going to prepare it before it goes into the digester is also a variable that you've got to look at. Then it comes to the digester itself. You need to heat it, as I mentioned before. You need to mix it as well. You need a way, a means of mixing your, your um, uh, organic waste inside your digester. Because if it's not universally dispersed, what you're going to find is that you're going to have microbes concentrated in a, in a certain part of your digester because that's where all the food is and you're not going to have an efficient process. Your loading rate, how much you load in a day is, is critically important. You can't overload it because then it, your microbes are going to, not going to be efficient. You can't underload it because then your whole digestion plant or your, uh, your biogas plant is not efficient enough. Um, so mixing, heating plays a critical role. Um, what you do with your digestate that comes out on the other side is also critically important. If you're, for instance, in the middle of a, of a city and you need to get rid of your digestate, it might make or break your project. 
because the same quantity of liquid that comes into your digester goes out the other, uh, the other side of the digester on a daily basis. So if you, if you haven't planned for getting rid of 20,000 liters of digester at the end of the day, you're in for a serious pro uh, challenge at the end of the day. So, um, and then ultimately you need to understand what you're going to do with the biogas that you're going to produce. Ultimately, you want to have a return on your investment uh, on a big commercial plant. You can spend many, many millions of rands or dollars on your plant and you want a reasonable return on your investment. So you need to understand what you're going to do. How are you going to utilize the biogas that you're going to produce? Are you going to convert it into electricity? Are you going to combust it purely to have heat? heat hot water or create steam, whether you're going to upgrade it to biomethane or whether you're going to have a combination of all three of those. All of those factors will play a role ultimately to, to determine how efficient and effective your, your biogas plant can be or going to be and whether you're going to have a return on the investment that you have. So that's in a very brief nutshell, just giving really brief basic concepts around biogas um, so that you get a better understanding about it. Um, in the next video, I'll look specifically at um, residential or small microscale digesters. And as I mentioned in the last video, um, I'll look at commercial digesters and what you need to look at and what you need to understand before you go and invest the huge amounts of money into a biogas plant. All right, I hope that gives you a little bit better understanding of what biogas is about. Thank you very much.